Hello, my name is Juan Ramirez, and I will give you a brief history of bioethics. Why is this topic significant in the history of science? Well, ultimately, as of recently, this is a new branch of science that has come out um, in regards to the morality and the thought behind the, the way we do things in order to improve our humanity. Uh, so the word bioethics was actually coined in 1970 by Dr. Van Rensselaer Potter, and he was a professor, um, and he, one day he was contemplating on why these experiments uh, have these consequences, and were these participants allowed, um, and did they give consent to participate in this, in this experiment? Um, the word bioethics is it's just, a, it, it was a new conjunction of scientific knowledge and moral appreciation of human evolutionary standing, meaning that, you know, humans involved, humans are always constantly evolving. And we always have to ask and question ourselves, what, what is behind that? What is the morality behind that? Because humans are cold uh, hearted. They have the, the feeling and they have the feeling so Potter was a biological scientist, um, which, but he more or less coined this phrase uh, towards the medical field because at, at that time there was a lot of medical advancements as we know today. Many vaccines have been coming along, many cures for the certain types of illnesses, but no one really thought about what it took to get that and what it meant to get the way we, we are, um, people would just view the good, but there people would hide, uh, people would hide the evil or the immoral aspects of those uh, discoveries. Um, Bioethics is very is a is a very broad term, used to encompass the ethical analysis or moral questions of a certain discovery or procedure. Bioethics, it's, it's something really new. So there's not really, um, it's a very new discipline. So it's very difficult to pinpoint exactly um, how things are and like other uh, disciplines and branches. Um, and because of uh, uh, Dr. Potter's uh, thinking of and wanting to discover more and contemplate about this, he did uh, establish the Kennedy Institute of Ethics, which is, a, which is at, located at Georgetown University. In what ways have society and our culture influenced this topic? Well, for starters, well, for starters, there was, um, I'll give you a little brief history of US experimentation on slaves uh, in the 19th century. Um, as we all know, many slaves were viewed as property and therefore they were, there were been, uh, many doctors at the time were able to use them as a police without any repercussion. So I'll give you uh, three examples here uh, to give you a, a short list. So there is a Dr. Thomas Hamilton. Um, he was from Georgia. And to study uh, the effects of heat on the human body, what he did was place one of his slaves in an op uh, open pit, what is used to cook uh, you know, pigs or other types of meat. Um, and he placed him there for many hours until the, uh, the slave passed out. And that was just to see how the human body reacted to heat stroke. And then Dr. Walter Jones of Virginia, um, in order to quote unquote, cure typhoid, typhoid fever, he got a quote unquote, uh, six slaves. And what he did um, with a few of his other colleagues at the time, he poured scalding water on them. Um, we don't know exactly the temperatures of, of that water, but he did pour scalding water on them um, in order to see if that would cure their typhoid fever. But it little is known about this experiment since um, there's not many records written of it. There's only a few records of this uh, type of these type of experiments written down or and still preserved. And then there's the father of gynecology, uh, Dr. Ephraim McDowell um, from Kentucky. Uh, we all know that he successfully was the first one to remove an ovarian, ovarian tumor. Um, but we what we don't know is that he did operate on four slave females of various ages before. Um, before he did operate, uh, operate and su successfully remove that tumor. But what we know uh, to this day is that from those experiments, those young females 
um, will last sterile and very scarred for the rest of their life, which is something very sad that we don't know and we don't get to hear about. What ways has this topic influenced society and or culture? Well, many medical advancements require much uh, experimentation, often being human beings, because we don't really uh, get the full spectrum of what this type of disease and this medical cure does without fully seeing it. And on humans, we don't get the same aspect as we, we would see like on a rat or on a pig, for example, even though they can be similar to us, as it doesn't give us a full gauge of what it is capable for humans. In the 19th century, um, this physical biologist named Claude Bernard stated that no experiment, no matter how advantageous to humanity, shall be completed on man without his consent. And this is something that he proclaimed uh, and was well known for at the time. But unfortunately, due to many circumstances, this rule was just a rule. Um, it was never followed by many people, especially during the 19th century where there was no and that there's no establishing of ethics for that time or no, no, no sense of moral compass for other people besides the accepted race at that time. Again, previously like previous stated, all experimentation is leading to many unknowns with risks involved. Um, and because of all these uh, dark uh, experiments that are have never been really brought up in history, a U.S. Congress did establish the National Commission for the Protection of Human Subjects of Biomedical and Behavioral Research to establish the best ethical practices for the current uh, time and for us moving forward. Thankfully, with this, um, this has allowed many medical advan advancements, but at the same time has not uh, detrimented um, uh, the morality of people and has not harmed people as uh, with the best knowledge that we know to this day. Um, and this is a cartoon that I did find on the internet. Um, and this is a little bit funny and it pokes fun at the modern times because in the past, like the quote says, what is ethical is what God tells us is right. Many people who were healers, uh, doctors at the time, they believed it was a divine right that it was given to them from God to go ahead and heal these people. And if they were able to heal them, it's because it was God's will, not so much backed up by science or medicine. Um, in the present, we do have this modern doctor, and, and what the quote says, it is ethical and a, a rational deliberation of facts, values, and theories to make a decision authentic to self. Now, this, you know, this really does bring in the whole, uh, separates the religious and the scientific science uh, aspect of modern medicine, because people nowadays don't really think about the, the moral aspect when it comes to modern medicine, but people, what people want to see is just the, the cold hard facts. Um, and this is when people see the facts, they see that this is truly, uh, this is truly the way for it for uh, humanity to go forward. And my la my my favorite one is the last one. Um, and it's a cell phone, um, and it says, uh, "What is ethical is what the algorithm calculates is right." And it's just a simple smartphone like the ones we have at this day. Um, so I think the cartoon is a little bit out of date itself, which is a little bit funny in that way. But um, it does say like an algorithm calculate what is right. So that is up for debate. Will an algorithm calculate who, uh, who gets to live? What's the best treatment for a human? Um, will a robot full of numbers, uh, zeros and ones, be able to deliver, deliver, a, deliver a baby, uh, cure, yeah, cure, a cure cancer? We don't know, but how things are going to this day, um, that does seem that uh, in the future, that a lot of medicine will be, and not just medicine, many uh, experiments and scientific discoveries will be calculated by robots, not so much human. But the question is, what would be the best uh, medium for, uh, for the human involvement with this algorithm? And the image was taken from Google so that's my sighting for this image. Um, and here are my references, um, my three references. And uh, thank you again for, thank you again for my presentation and I hope you like it.